Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. My mom and cousin told me about this time they ordered out from a burger joint. They said the patties there, and pretty much all the food, was pretty nasty. And based on that description alone, I am shocked that that place hasn't been crucified by the health inspector yet. Nasty Patty is the episode where Spongebob and Mr. Krabs make a rotten Krabby Patty and think they killed the health inspector with it. This episode aired on March 1st, 2002 and is the episode that introduced Health Inspector Yellowtail, the main health inspector in the series. While everybody remembers him from this episode, he's actually appeared a handful of times in the series after this episode. Like in episode 214, The Krabby Chronicle from season 6, where his last name was revealed to be Yellowtail, or episode 398, Spongebob's Place from season 10, where his first name was revealed to be Andy. But he first appeared in this episode in his purest form. Uh, where am I? Now in the past, I've criticized Mr. Krabs' villainous side, but I think in this episode, it works much better compared to previous examples like episode 34, Arg from season 1, or 77, Jellyfish Hunter from season 2. And we'll get to that in a minute, right after we watch this episode and see how to prepare for a fake health inspector. So the episode starts up and it's dark and rainy at Bikini Atoll, which reminds the French narrator of the time when Spongebob and Mr. Krabs thought they killed the health inspector, and tells the story. One bright and sunny morning, the health inspector arrives at the Krusty Krab, and Mr. Krabs was worried about being closed down for good if he finds a single health violation. Swindell wasn't worried, so he obeys Mr. Krabs' orders to butter up the health inspector, who wants one of everything on the menu. I wonder if health inspectors end up getting fat from eating at every fast food joint in town. Swindell and Mr. Krabs give him a smorgasbord, and then give him food that wasn't on the previously shown smorgasbord for some reason. After he ate all that food, he asked Spongebob for a plain Krabby Patty and his inspection would be finished. Spongebob told Mr. Krabs that they'll pass after he gets one more Krabby Patty. That's not quite what he meant. Mr. Krabs thought they were in the clear and they can can before being interrupted by a news report giving a warning about a fake health inspector going to restaurants asking for free food. That alone made Mr. Krabs absolutely furious, and he thought their health inspector was the imposter, and quickly convinced Spongebob that he was the imposter, so he decides to get back at him with a diabolical Krabby Patty. While Spongebob was hesitant at pranking him, even after being threatened to be fired, he still joins in and makes the patty even more horrible. After shenanigans, the Krabby Patty looked absolutely disgusting, and Spongebob called it the Nasty Patty. And that still looks better than the food from the bad burger joint my mom and cousin ate at. Right before the health inspector was about to eat it, a fly threw into his throat and he started to choke on it. Swindle and Mr. Krabs thought he ate the rotten patty and was choking on it, and they laughed at his misfortune. While they weren't looking, the health inspector slipped and hit his head and was knocked unconscious, and the fly flew out of his mouth. Then another news report came on saying that the fake inspector has been captured, meaning that their health inspector was the real one. Spongebob thought they could just explain the situation, but they saw the real inspector was knocked out and they thought he was dead. They freaked out and Mr. Krabs put the blame on Spongebob and said that he could have talked him out of it. You threatened to fire him! Spongebob thought he alone was guilty, but Mr. Krabs thought the only solution was to bury the inspector's body. Later that night, Spongebob and Mr. Krabs took the body far enough away to bury it, with Spongebob being disturbed by touching the body. When they got to the top of a hill, Spongebob dug a hole and then tossed a rock which hit the health inspector right as he regained consciousness. After he was buried, Spongebob was unhappy about doing this, but Mr. Krabs said that nobody could know about it since they both would be going to jail. Then the police caught them and said they were getting arrested, but they were just joking since they weren't at the Krusty Krab. Then it started to rain, which turned the dirt to mud, and the health inspector slid down the hill. I don't think that's how mud works. Spongebob and Mr. Krabs put the shovel in the trunk, but the health inspector showed up right next to them, and Spongebob put him in the trunk even more freaked out. He couldn't keep his cool no matter what kind of excuse Mr. Krabs came up with. On their way back, Mr. Krabs told Spongebob to put the body in the freezer, but Spongebob almost blew their cover, but Mr. Krabs said bottles of soda just in time. Back at the Krusty Krab, Spongebob found out that the back door was locked, 
so he stuffed the health inspector inside his hat and went around front. He doesn't have the key to the back door? Spongebob went to put his hat in the freezer, and Mr. Krabs kept laughing at Spongebob's stumbling to distract the police officers, as well as claiming it was open cash register night. Then the police got a call about what Spongebob and Mr. Krabs did, not knowing it was them of course, but Officer Nancy wanted a soda. Mr. Krabs gave her one, without ice. She goes back to get the ice herself, but is stopped by Mr. Krabs. They have an ice machine. Mr. Krabs confessed and claimed Spongebob did the whole murder himself, but Spongebob retaliated and said that Mr. Krabs wanted to do it in the first place. They then owned up to their crime, but apparently the health inspector wasn't in there, so they all took it as a joke. Then the health inspector walked in and everybody thought he was a zombie, so the police attacked him, but then realized he was just the health inspector. He then passed the Krusty Krab, only at the risk of being hit again. Everybody was happy, the health inspector gets hit by the door, and the episode ends with the French narrator saying all the characters are idiots. Well, it's true. So that was Nasty Patty, and that is an absolute gem of an episode. This is another one of my childhood favorites. My favorite parts were when Spongebob and Mr. Krabs made the Nasty Patty itself, and when the cops attacked the health inspector thinking he was a zombie. I like the character moments when Spongebob was trying to butter up the health inspector in some way, when Mr. Krabs was laughing and saying Spongebob was funny to distract the police, or when Mr. Krabs was worried about what the health inspector would say, and with how chill and jokey the police officers are towards Spongebob and Mr. Krabs, just to name a few. I love how the nighttime atmosphere is much different here than how the night sky is normally seen in Spongebob. Usually it's a dark blue sky and we see the moon and the flower clouds. But here, the sky is completely cloudy and it's a little foggy and it eventually starts raining. The dark gray shade over everything and the slow music really adds to how bad the situation is. Even though the health inspector wasn't really dead, I do love the stormy atmosphere because it's so much different than the usual atmosphere we get for the show. Let's go back to what I said about Mr. Krabs' villainous side being so much better here than in previous episodes. In previous seasons, Mr. Krabs' greed and manipulation was what drove the story and what made him seem so awful. But in this episode, Mr. Krabs wanted to just pass the health inspection. And when he thought he was being scammed by a health inspector who was going around to get free food, he of course hates giving out free food, so he thought that he was being scammed the whole time. If that news report didn't come out at all, he wouldn't have thought twice about the health inspector being potentially fake. And could you really blame him for being angry when he thought he was being scammed? I hate being scammed too. Like those stupid phone calls or emails saying you have money inherited to you, the reasons as to why prices on everything increases every year, or taxes and student loans. So it's totally understandable as to why Mr. Krabs was f***ing pissed about being scammed into giving out free food. As to why Mr. Krabs at first tried to blame the whole thing on Spongebob, both of them were freaking out over the sight of the unconscious health inspector, so that is what is known as acting irrationally. I've talked about this point before, so I won't dwell on it too much. Emotions like fear or anger amplified to the nth degree will of course cause people to act irrationally, and this is no exception. I've done the same thing before when scared and or angry, so don't you try to tell me that you haven't done it before. And that is why, in my opinion, this is the best showcase of Mr. Krabs' villainous side yet. Speaking of which, I also think Spongebob is quite strong here as a character too. I like how Spongebob pretty quickly got on board with making the nasty patty, and how grossed out he was at touching the health inspector's not dead body. He also has an arc where he goes from letting Mr. Krabs put all the blame on him, to standing up for himself and snapping back at Mr. Krabs for ratting him out to the cops. He stands up for himself in this episode, and I like that. But Spongebob's nervous laughter in front of the cops is peak, let's be real. Random observations and fun facts about this episode. This is the first and so far only time we see rain at the Bikini Atoll Island. During the storm, the Krusty Krab sign is on the right side of the restaurant and has neon green lights. This is also the first time where Mr. Krabs is shown bathing in money. And no, the wheelbarrow full of money from episode 20, Culture Shop from season 1, doesn't count. My one nitpick with this episode is how the health inspector slid down the hill in the storm. Spongebob dug vertically down, the health inspector's head stuck out at first, 
and when it rains, he was buried horizontally instead of vertically. Don't worry, that's my only nitpick. My favorite gags in this episode are the can-can dance, the news reports breaking in out of nowhere, and the fact that the health inspector was hit with an anchor and a barrel. This episode is pretty great. It's got a great atmosphere, a lot of hilarious moments that I can watch on repeat all afternoon, and all the characters in this are pretty strong. Except this one. This is just another strong season 3 episode. Nasty Patty is an awesome episode. All the characters are pretty strong, the concept and theme are rather mature, and it has a lot of funny moments throughout the whole 11 minutes, and a different atmosphere and tone that we don't really see a lot these days. Pretty good all around. And instead of wasting time wondering why this bad burger joint hasn't been shut down yet, I'm instead going to imagine myself in a place where it won't be on my mind. Huh? A previously wrinkled cardboard box? Eh, this'll do. Idiot Box is the episode where Spongebob and Patrick play in a box with their imagination, and Squidward wonders how they're able to make noises without anything else with them. Like Nasty Patty, this episode aired on March 1st, 2002, and is the episode that taught people that they all have their own... IMAGINATION! Hmm with this meme being constantly reused over time because the show crew can't help themselves. This episode is yet another one of those classic episodes starring mostly Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward, with Squidward doubting something that Spongebob and Patrick are doing, but then later has a change of heart and ends up having fun until things go south, with another example of this being episode 4, Bubble Stand from season 1. Also, fun fact, this is the second episode with the word box in the title. The first being episode 69, The Secret Box from season 2. I don't have much of an intro for this, but this episode doesn't need much of an introduction. So let's watch this episode and see Spongebob's imagination make a rainbow. So the episode starts up and Spongebob and Patrick are waiting for the mail truck. It soon approaches and they start hopping in excitement, which Squidward remarks on. He also comments on how big the box is that they receive. Spongebob and Patrick open it to take out a giant screen TV which they throw in the garbage can and jump inside the box to have fun. Squidward remarks on them buying the TV just so they can play in the box makes him wonder if they have any brains. Well, Spongebob's brain is normal size, but I'm not sure about the size or validity of Patrick's brain. Spongebob says they ordered it because they had their imagination to have fun. They explain that to Squidward, but he was more interested in having the TV. He asked them for it, and they let him have it, so he took it and went inside. Spongebob and Patrick decided to start climbing a mountain inside the box. Squidward took the TV inside his house, but went back out because he realized he didn't have the remote. He then heard Spongebob and Patrick shouting and got annoyed. He kicked the box and then heard the sounds of an avalanche, which sounded too realistic to be fake. Then he tapped the box and seemed to cause another avalanche. He thought they were too injured, and opened the box only to find out that nothing happened and they were okay. Well? Squidward wondered how all that happened at all, but soon decided to go back inside and watch his new TV. He then heard a helicopter flying low, and looked inside the box again to find nothing was happening. Spongebob said the noises came from their imagination. Squidward says he has a lot of imagination, more than Spongebob and Patrick combined. And yet the rainbow didn't work for him. Patrick said Squidward needed a box, so he went inside and found a hat box with a sombrero. He tried sitting in it and waited, but nothing happened. The box is too small. Squidward got mad and kicked the box and then heard the police. He thought they came for him, but the noises he heard were from the box again. Squidward got mad and kicked his box, which Spongebob and Patrick took. Squidward tried to watch TV, but every show that was on was about boxes in some way, shape, or form, including championship boxing. And that's still more than what we have to watch today. Then Squidward heard a space launch, so he came to the conclusion that Spongebob and Patrick were using a tape recorder and thinking that Squidward wouldn't know better. Squidward asked them to show him the tape recorder, but they didn't have one, just a tape recorder box. So Squidward came inside because he wanted to see how the box works. Spongebob said the box was about imagination, so Squidward decided to go to Robot Pirate Island. Spongebob and Patrick agreed, but they just closed their eyes and said normal robot and pirate phrases. 
but not island phrases. Squidward got mad he couldn't hear any sound effects and went back inside, but continued to wonder how they could work that thing and could hear that they were actually on Robot Pirate Island. So he decided to find the source of the sound effects when Spongebob and Patrick go to bed at night. Hours later, they finally went to bed and Squidward snuck in there to look inside. But he couldn't find anything and started to believe that maybe it really was their imagination. He denied it thinking it was ridiculous, but started to pretend to drive a race car and started to hear noises. I'm hearing noises too. Squidward thought it was actually working, but it was really the dump truck that was picking up the box, and Spongebob overheard it and confirmed that the sound effects were indeed from imagination. The truck went to the dump, and Squidward fell out of the box, landed on a pie, and the box fell on him. The next day, Spongebob and Patrick saw the box was gone and went to see Squidward, and the episode ends. So that was Idiot Box, and all I can say is that is nothing short of an amazing episode. The concept of being inside the box and it emitting super realistic sound effects only to find out that nothing is happening on the inside is something that is very classic Spongebob, no doubt. It's something that embodies this show in its purest form. Childhood innocence with plenty of imagination and spirit, but a little bit of maturity in there every now and then. This is a simple story with only a couple of key locations, but it plays out in such a way that feels just like how you would expect it to play out for a show like this. You also wonder how something like this is happening at all, because if you tried it in real life, it doesn't work as you'd want. If there's only one episode in season 3 to watch that showcases what this show is truly all about, it's this one. All the characters here are awesome. Patrick is a highlight for me. He's not extremely stupid in here, even a little smart at times. One of the stupidest things he said in this episode was you can imagine yourself as a starfish, even though he's already a starfish, but he uses that as a point to show how imagination works. There's nothing obnoxious about him at all in this episode. And considering later seasons, and even some episodes we already talked about, that's a miracle. I love how he mentions the second avalanche, even though he says he only heard them laughing. I love when he pops out of the hat box, and especially his gag with the glasses showing real human eyes. Spongebob is great here too. I like when he immediately gives Squidward the TV when he wants it. All the moments where he's concerned when he and Patrick are climbing the mountain inside the box, and when he explains the true meaning of the box and imagination to Squidward. I've always gotten a fun, simple joy just out of the scene of him and Patrick hopping in excitement over their package at the beginning of the episode. I also like how patient he and Patrick are when Squidward is accusing them of having a tape recorder. And of course, Squidward. Squidward steals the show in this episode, but that's no surprise either. I like how excited he is when Spongebob and Patrick let him have their giant TV. I love when he was concerned when he thinks Spongebob and Patrick were actually injured from an avalanche inside the box. His thought cloud where he thinks Spongebob and Patrick are using a tape recorder for sound effects. And how much fun he's having at the end when he thinks he's driving a race car. Some other Squidward highlights are when he wants to go to Robot Pirate Island and when he's trying to watch TV but every show he flips to is about boxes. His character arc in here is pretty great as always. Most of the Squidward character development episodes in this show have been so much fun to go back, rewatch, and discuss. As a kid, my favorite sequences were the parts where the sounds of Spongebob and Patrick climbing a mountain inside the box, which then leads into the avalanches caused by Squidward making direct contact with the box in some way, the part where Squidward sits in the hat box before getting angry and he thinks the cops came for him, and when Squidward inadvertently goes to the dump at the end. You also wonder how it's possible for Squidward to hear those sound effects if Spongebob and Patrick couldn't. Some could say Squidward was just going insane putting up with the sounds of them yelling from the box, and that's possible, but Spongebob and Patrick heard each other and the sound effects really were their imagination. Simple as that. And yes, Spongebob's Imagination Rainbow. It's iconic, we've seen it online, and I can't see anything new that hasn't been said about it, so I'll leave it there. At this point, I could probably say more about the paper plaque that is left in the box after the robot pirate battle that Squidward tears up. Those pirates were probably braver than most people on the military, going up against robots that can do anything at a moment's notice, 
as opposed to the army who goes against other armies which consist of people. Robots are a whole other species. So kudos to those pirates for defeating the robots, and I'm sorry Squidward destroyed the plaque. I think at this point, these two episodes are my favorite pair of episodes in season 3 we've gone over so far. That could change in the future, but so far, this is by far the most fun I've had with a pair of episodes this season. I wish I could say more, but I think I've summed it up as best I can. This is nothing short of a classic episode. Great character moments, lots of funny lines and sequences, and a concept that could only work in Spongebob, and probably wouldn't work as well in something like The Fairly Odd Parents, or at least it wouldn't feel as special as it does in Spongebob. An iconic episode no fan can dislike, and will always be a great episode with the true spirit of Spongebob. Even if we never got to see the setting of Robot Pirate Island, damn it. Idiot Box is an amazing episode. It's very funny, the characters are written perfectly, and it's an excellent example of Spongebob in its most pure form. To show to anybody who hasn't seen Spongebob before to get them to understand something that makes the show as special as it is. Well, this was fun, but I've been in this cardboard box a little too long, and I think I'm running a bit low on oxygen, so I need to imagine myself someplace where I won't be wasting my time. Oh, I'm back here again. <sighs>